man of culture like I am. <laughs> I enjoy being adults dressing up in superhero suits and battling other adults in spandex or whatever the hell they put the monsters in. Deal with it. I also do quite enjoy the premise of Battle Royale House, where people duke it out. Kamen Rider Gates is a show that combines these two things to create a good top shot show. I like this. This is perfect. One I believe brings a more enjoyable story that appeals to a broader audience, not only of young children that they are trying to market their toys to. It clearly takes inspiration from other shows like Ryuki with the whole Battle Royale premise, but it also has an excellent story so far. Well, better than most kids shows tell. I mean, they already had me at the adults in spandex part. I'm kidding. I was just kidding! Come on! Come on! You guys know I was just kidding, right? A good plot is essential for any piece of media trying to convey a story. What I've loved about Kamen Rider is that even though it's a show targeted toward kids to buy toys, they don't let that stop the writers from making engaging stories with deeper themes. In all honesty, I've been enjoying Geats a bit more than I expected, especially with what we've had so far with some characters. Also, this video will not be a full show analysis, as I'd rather wait before making any final judgments or conclusions on the story in its entirety, as there are only 15 episodes out at the time of this call. In the beginning, we see a young man being approached by a woman holding a box. She congratulates him and reveals what seems to be a driver inside the box, telling him they have selected him to be a common rider, to which he replies he's already aware he has been chosen. We then cut to job hunting student Keiwa Sakurai, who has sold yet another job in Ted. You see, Keiwa is struggling to find what he wants to do with his life and what aspirations he wants to follow. Being a young man myself, I feel I can relate to a lot of Kiwa's experiences and struggles and a lot of other young men Kiwa's each can relate. And this establishes him as the character whose lens we see in most of the story too. His older sister Stara treats him to Tanuki Soba to encourage him, although she isn't much help since he's upset with watching the latest live stream of her favorite celebrity influencer, Neon Kurama. Remember, it should be important too. A mysterious, transparent wall separates the siblings sadly, and monsters known as the Jamato appear in the area and attack Kewa and other unlucky people trapped inside the area. Powering to safety, Kewa runs into Neon Kurama and was saved by someone who is later instantly killed by the Jamato. I like this scene a lot because it shows how no rider is truly safe in this world. This is also where the subversion happens. Usually, this is the part of the story where the main character gains his power and transforms into a Kamen Rider. But Kewa is not the main character. The pair instead encounter the one who is actually the main rider of the series, Ukiyo Ace, who assures them he will save the world, but not before hitting on Neon for no reason at all. What you doing out here with all this Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. The two watch as he transforms into Kamen Rider Geats and defeats the Jamato Horde to return the world back to normal and is crowned in Desertion. Now you might ask what the hell a Desertion is, but don't worry, we'll get to that soon enough. Relax. This was a very interesting spectacle because the main riders in most of the shows usually gain their powers at the start of the series. But Ace begins the show with him already a rider. Kira wakes up in his room believing what happened was a nightmare. He returns to the Soba restaurant with the owner alive and well, but Kira initially shrugs it off as just his nightmare. That is, until a mysterious woman named Tumori appears with the Desire Driver and ID call to invite Kira to join the Desire Grand Prix. I'll call it the DGP for short. Kira agrees to join the DGP to fulfill his desire for world peace. Before approaching Kira, however, Tumiri previously had given Neon and multiple other random people their own desire driver and ID calls. Upon touching the call, Kira's memories of the old world are restored. Now, the desire Grand Prix is off to a start again. We then find out in the next episode what the DGP is and why it takes place. It is basically a game to protect the world from the threat of the mysterious enemy Jamato, whose origin and purpose are still unknown. Each participant transforms into a Kamen Rider and competes to win the game by defeating enemies and saving people. The winner of the Desire Grand Prix becomes the Desertion and gains the right to bring an ideal world to life, surprise. But only those who win the competition will realize the world they wish for.
Ace has been the undefeated champion of the DGP and has used his wishes for trivial things such as becoming the Star Obuza Stats or Obuza Stats and making the host of the DGP his biological family. At a glance, you would take Ace for an overly confident man who uses the DGP to fulfill his random personal desires. But there's a lot more depth to his character and every action he takes has a calculated and hidden motive behind it and his past and true motivations remain a mystery. The main reason he still takes part in the DGP it seems is to find his missing mother whose disappearance seems to have something to do with the DGP and its creators as he's even trying to fulfill this wish is denied for no reason. Ace differs from most main Kamen Riders as he counts off more like an anti-hero than a straight lace hero. He is very self-serving mostly and will lie and trick both his enemies and allies into reaching his goals. Another thing that makes him a unique protagonist is that, unlike most heroes, he is always one step ahead of everyone and Tinar is what you picture him being cornered turn out to be events he masterfully manipulated to serve his purpose. This tendency of his annoys the game master of the DGP to no end and leads him to doing everything possible to remove Ace from the DGP, even going against his own rules and stipulations. And even this doesn't get rid of the guy. But defeat me. He is however not entirely selfish and has moments that show his aptitude for doing good and helping others. He even gives advice to his fellow participants when they need it and always does his best to save everyone, if he can. I mean, who has time to care about a single individual when the world is at stake? Although Ace is a fascinating character and there's still more about his past that I'm hoping to learn as the show progresses, I have to admit that the character who piques my interest more is Kewa. I mean he's also, you can't hate the guy. Kewa in the show is characterized as an extremely good natured and naive young man who is easily manipulated by other characters in the DGP because of his naivety and consideration for others. He however also has a cynical outlook on life and believes that a perfect world is just an unreachable dream which sounds like a bit of cognitive dissonance to me considering the way she decides upon the first time and also because of his good nature and naivety but I rest my case. Though kind, he lacks resolve and a clear path of what he truly wants in life. Kewa at his core however remains an unyielding young man willing to put his life on the line for others just like the principle of the shinobi represented in his rider motif. In the desired Grand Prix, Kewa rarely ever goes out to fight the Jamato, instead opting to save any civilians in the area before engaging in combat. Despite the competitive nature of the game, Kewa stays considerate of other players. He acts as the peacemaker who constantly tries to make the players get along, talking things out concerning their problems and calling out the players who behave the way. He also often hands over the race buckles he gains to support some others, especially the boost buckle, which he keeps finding the game's events through sheer luck. Or is it? Overall, he wants the DGP and its players to be used to protect the world from the Jamato. He is also the character who seems the most visibly disturbed by the fact that riders can die during the desired Grand Prix and seeks to undo the lives of the riders taken during the DGP the second time he becomes a participant. In the beginning, he seeks to take part in the DGP to grant his wish for all this, but this inevitably appears to be him assuming a moral high ground for lack of better words, as although he generally believes in that wish, he does not dare to battle violently to fulfill it. This leads to him being chastised by Ace, who understands that the GDP is not a place where the idealistic succeed, but those with the will to grab a hold of their desires. He however gains the resolve to fight when he needed it the last round, when he has to save Sister Sarah from the Jamaat. It turns out Ace played him do. How Ace encouraged him to face the Jamato head on. This was a ruse to get the ninja Baku enraging Kewa. Unfortunately, he is eliminated because of taking excessive damage from the fight, but Kewa was relieved that he could stay by his sister's side before vanishing. After Kewa's elimination from the DGP, several aspects of his personality shift because of the game's cost of moving desire from a person, such as his favorite food being sushi instead of tanuki soba, and buying lottery tickets for himself instead of donating his money for charitable courses as his sister expects. Because of giving up in his response to find a job, this was because Kira's cynicism worsened, making him much more motivated than usual and instead wallowing in his bad luck. Kira later regains his motivation after being inspired by Itetsu and Yoshiki's risky actions to protect others and this change fully fades after Kira regains his driver and memories. I'm back baby! What do I say about Nino? 
Ah, yes. She's a live streamer of the show called Neon Team and a girl with mommy issues. She is someone who doesn't entirely understand how the world works because they have sheltered her most of her life and that leads to her being easily tricked. Her mommy issues stem from her mother's overprotective nature ever since she was kidnapped years ago. Because of this, she often tries to escape her home to live her own life and she mostly does this because she believes her mother only wants to control her life and doesn't truly really love her. She apparently believes in fairy tale romance, hoping one day for a prince charming to come and sweep her off her feet. Serious? She joins the Desire Grand Prix to find someone who genuinely loves her. But this wish isn't necessarily romantic love, but any kind of genuine love, shown in her being enamored with the Sakurai sibling's display of affection. However, midway into the second round, she gave up hope of ever winning after a zombie bit her. It wasn't until she received words of encouragement and new information regarding the DGP from K and Ace respectively, who inspired her to continue fighting and eventually get herself cured of the infection. Anyway, she still gets eliminated because this man is just as in pick else. After her elimination from the DGP, just like you are, her personality changes, now accepting her mother's choices instead of defying them. However, she also quickly reverts to her original personality after being met up with Tsunuri and her father, Kose Kurama, who seems to have some sort of unknown connection to the GGP. After she rejoins the DGP, she accepts the challenge of getting her desire fulfilled while also being open to teamwork for survival, shown by her aiding other players and later agreeing with Kewa about helping each other, pointing out to Michi Naga that being eliminated is better than getting killed by the Jamatos as there is another chance. Michi Naga Azuma is a construction worker in civilian life. He was caught in the jam area one night and lost his friend and fellow worker, which led him to see other riders as nothing but obstacles in his way of fulfilling his late friend's dying wish. Eventually taking part as a contestant in the DGP after the death of his friend, he exudes a cold and standoffish attitude in battle, considering all other riders to be his enemies. But to put it in simple terms, this man will one hand with anyone who is a rider, especially the ones who get in his way, and there is no exception on the feed rally. He is more than happy to see them fall in combat, which is based on his desire to win and the belief that no participant is acting on fully selfless motivations. He is hostile towards Kiyobis, who defeated him in previous DGP games, and therefore serves as his greatest opponent. His desire is to crush all common riders out of revenge for the death of his best friend, especially Leeds. Michinaga can also be stubborn and brutish, such as harshly rejecting any help or advice from other riders despite him being in a dire situation or the current desire Grand Prix round being geared around teamwork, as he vehemently views any of them as his enemies, or rashly taking action without thinking, such as attempting to finish an infected Neon before she turned into a zone. This also extends to combat, where he prevents to engage in direct brute force. Despite his coldness and ruthlessness to do anything it takes to win, he has a code of honor as he draws a line at certain dirty structures, such as players playing dirty to eliminate one another, particularly by sabotaging them. Rarely, he still cares about certain people, such as his friend Tori Imai, who was killed in the game and mocked by other riders as he died. But I believe this lack of care for other riders is just an extension of the distrust for them. Sumori is as cheerful and excited as she is equally mysterious. She is the navigator of the Design Grand Prix who aids and explains the rules and missions for the DGP participants. She mostly does not favor one participant over another, viewing them equally. While she is normally indifferent towards her disassociate's wishes, she was far from pleased when Ace's latest wish was for her to be his older sister. This man, Punk Jack. Just what can I say to encapsulate this character? The guy is simply fun to watch. He's that guy you know is bad, but just can't help but look forward to what you'll do next. It's not entirely his fault, however. The guy is just doing job as a DGP staff member, though he still uses some underhanded tactics to accomplish it. When Rin was originally introduced, he was disallowed from speaking or revealing his identity and kept a composed persona with two-timer Morio Kogenaya in their temporary partnership, though he would still show some disdain towards him, such as punching him at that after Morio lightly punched him, and even bumping into him during his time switching teams. After the final round, Wen reveals his true identity as a punk rocker who is flirtatious and narcissistic, which is very much the opposite of his previously shown traits. However, 
part of this appears to be an act he puts up in front of others to distract from his true purpose of observing Ace and eliminating the undefeated champion. When he's only by himself, he downplays the punk rocker personality and becomes a bit more mysterious. They reveal more of his story in the current arc and his reasons for joining the DGP are insightful, if not interesting. I'll leave that to you to find out for so ask not to spoil any more of the story. I genuinely appreciate how Geese has all its main riders being distinct and different as they all are. Every character who acts as a rider in the story has a particular ID core that represents elements of that personality, such as Geese having the motive of a false or kitsune for a strict sun nature, Tycoon having the motive of a tanuki or the Japanese raccoon dog, which in full block is more simple minded by exhausting shapeshifter, so naturally his primary form is a ninja. Bufa is that of a zombie slash buffalo because of his hard-headedness, and Nago has that of a black house cat who yearns for the outside life. The characters were all well thought out and intertwined into each of these characters and their stories. If we were to talk about things I don't like about Git, it would also be me complaining about older series, as the issues are always the same, such as some cheesy dialogue and the terrible CGI. But I wouldn't call these problems as they are prevalent and have become a mainstay in every Tokusatsu show. Even if the budget for Kamen Rider shows isn't too big and you don't have the same quality of CG as Hollywood stuff, they are genuinely fun to watch. It was very genuine and realistic fire since it's mostly actual suit actors throwing down and doing actual stunts on location. In conclusion, Geet is a must watch if you are to be satisfied. And I, for one, look forward to what happens next with this show. Hands up.